In this lesson, we're going to be creating camera shake and adding to the composite. Okay, so here we are in lesson 10 underscore begin, and we're gonna pop back into that street level comp. So I'm just gonna double click to open that up. And just to make things go a little bit faster, I'm gonna go in and disable my vector generator by selecting it and hitting the D key, as well as the motion blur node. That's gonna just speed things up. Now, I wanna add some camera shake to this shot, as well as a few other things. So to get started, I'm gonna grab that camera shake footage and drag that into place. And I'm gonna open up this read node so you can see that this kind of has a weird frame range. This is from frame six to 84. So that's just based on what those frames are named. Um, so what we can do is a couple of things to get this to fit into what we're working with here. So um, we start here on frame 181 in our shot, but because this doesn't begin until frame uh, six, we need to add a time offset node so that this will begin at the same time as this. So I'm gonna hit tab and add a time offset. And so 181 minus six is gonna be 175. So we want that to start on frame 175. And I'm just gonna view that so you can kind of see what that looks like. And it looks pretty good. And then there at the very end, it freezes for the last few frames. So what I need to do is also add a Kronos node just so we can kind of stretch that out a little bit so this area right here isn't still. So we'll add a Kronos node, which is not a new node in Nuke, but they have updated the algorithm for this. So it is remaining competitive um, and just is really easy to use. So the input range here, we're gonna have to change just because of that whole time offset thing. So I'm gonna come in here and change the input range to 175 through that last frame, 271. Okay, and you can see that that looks pretty good, but it's been slowed down to 0.5 and we don't really need it to be uh, that much slower. So we're slowing it down so that it lasts a little bit longer. So I'm gonna try like 0.9 and let's just kind of go through those last few frames. Okay, we're still getting a little bit of a pause there at the end, but not as much. Let's try 0.8. I'm just zooming in a little bit to see if that Okay, just we've got like two frames, so let's do a point seven. Perfect. Okay, so point seven for that output speed is perfect. And now what I wanna do that I have that all set up is track this shot. So I'm gonna add a tracker. I'm just hitting tab and typing in tracker. And then I'm gonna zoom in because I'm gonna track this little corner right there. So we'll add a track and let's get that into place just right there. And since I was on the last frame, I'm just gonna track backwards. I'm also gonna open up this area here a little bit so I can um, just have a little bit more room to do this. So we'll begin tracking backwards. Um, this is actually a pretty fast track, but just so you don't have to watch that elapsing, I'm going to pause it and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so we finished our track, and that looks like that stayed on track very nicely. So now what I'm gonna do is use this tracked footage to create camera shake in our main shot. So I'm gonna add a transform node here, and we'll drop that in. Let's go ahead and view that transform node. I just hit the one key to do that. And we'll go ahead and link that translate of the transform to tracker one translate. So you can't see that that's kind of going out of the recording view, but link to tracker one translate. Okay, and then you can see that it's gonna go a little bit out of frame. So I'm gonna add another transform node. And this one we're going to view. So we'll select that one, hit the one key, and I'm gonna just scale this up a little bit. So the scale is at a 1.1. And then I'm just gonna change the translation so that we have just a little bit um, 
better centered so that it's not going to go out of frame as it begins to kind of move around. Okay, so let's move this over a little bit. And we don't need to move it up quite that high. Okay, so I have a few numbers there that I think will maybe work a little bit better. And we can just kind of click through there. And you'd want to play this back and watch it and make sure that that never goes out of frame. So I'll just play that. And you can see that's going to begin caching those frames. Now there's a couple other things I want to add as well. So we've got our little camera shake added in here. Um, but I also want for the image of the dragon to kind of change a little bit than what we have. I want to, to translate it over a little bit because I feel like it's ending up kind of in a weird place here. Um, you can see once we get to frame 271 that it's not quite centered over this building here. And that's kind of what we're going for. So I would like to just kind of scoot it over to the right a little bit and that's going to help that a lot. So you can see there kind of flies through and then he just kind of is not quite in the right place. So let's come up here. I'm just going to grab all these and kind of scoot those over a little bit. And we'll add a transform here as well. So we've got our transform three and I'll just X out of transform two. And what I would like to do is just kind of move forward once he's totally in frame. He's not cut off any because I don't want for him to begin moving before that because we'll be able to see the edge of the composite when he's out of frame. So here on about frame 193, we'll go ahead and key our translate and then we'll go forward to frame 270 exactly frame 270 and we'll just kind of move that over so he's just right there on top of the building. So that's going to be just a very subtle little change over time. You won't be able to really tell a big difference, but it's going to help him end up in a better place um, in relation to that building. Just a little bit better framing in our shot. Now another thing I'd like to do is add some smoke. So we've got that uh, smoke column image here. And I'm going to pull that in and you can see this is just kind of pretty basic little addition of some smoke. I want this to be behind these, uh, the composite of the dragon. So I'm going to merge it in kind of right about here. I'll just add a merge node to do that. And you can see that it's a little bit too big. Um, let me undo that. I don't want to move the transform. So we're going to need to add our own transform to the smoke. So we'll go ahead and add one of those in here. Just kind of scale that down a little bit. And I want it to be kind of back here in the background. Um, and you can see that it is not really um, cut out very perfectly. So what I'm going to do is go in between lessons and add a roto paint node that will come in here and kind of begin to give this a better edge. So um, we can probably see a little bit of what that's going to look like if we add a pre molt node because it does have an alpha channel. It's just not perfect. So you can see um, this is just kind of a little bit too wispy and, and and not super realistic. We also will want to add a roto node that's going to allow us to kind of have this um, sort of behind the buildings. So we'll want to add both of those things. So just to kind of get you started, I'll go ahead and add the roto paint node and We'll come in here to that roto paint node and just start getting that set up. So we do want to put out our RGBA and what we want to do is actually kind of paint into the alpha channel to, to make that a little bit um, more opaque there. So you can see if I just paint like this, um, I'm just going to get that white color. So I'm going to go in here to my color 
and I'm going to turn this alpha down just like that. And you can see still not quite right. So we'll want to take this value and take that down to black. And now we can begin erasing anything away that we want to. So I'm gonna just undo that and undo one more time to get rid of that stroke. And then now we'll, while we're in our roto paint, we can just come in and begin painting away on those edges and adding anything that we need um, just in the way of making that a better edge just like this. And we might need to make that brush a little bit smaller, um, really starting to just break that up so it doesn't look so soft. Okay, so I'll finish that up in between lessons as well as add the roto node that's gonna cut out those buildings, which is gonna be really simple. So we'll come back in the next lesson, have those two things done, and then we'll begin animating the smoke so we get a little bit of movement in here over time. So stick around, we'll be working on that in the next lesson.